So it took AMD six months since the RTX 3060 came out to finally launch their answer. And this is it. The RX 6600 XT. Now normally this should be exciting, but based on the comments that we've seen so far, uh, AMD's announcement was met with a bunch of shoulder shrugs and more than a few angry responses. And I completely get it, especially when you consider what happened to the RX 6700 XT, which board partners are still having trouble selling it anywhere close to what AMD said that it would cost. And let's be honest, with a starting price of $380 US, this isn't what you'd call an affordable graphics card by any stretch of the imagination. The other thing I want to mention right away is the fact that today is not the day that you will be able to find these cards, uh, on shelves at least, because you'll need to wait until August the 11th for that. Though I'm pretty sure that some might make their way into some online sellers today, so just keep your eyes open. Anyways, I don't want to start this video on a negative footing because there's actually a lot to like about the RX 6600 XT. But I also think AMD might need a reality check about certain things as well. So let's get to that, but first a quick word from our sponsor. You think you can escape brand loyalty? Not today. Introducing the full Origin series of gaming goodies by Thermaltake. They have it all to satisfy your gaming station. The full-size keyboard with that unique dual-tone design, the two ambidextrous loaded mouse options, wired and wireless, the smooth mouse pad with RGB, of course, the mouse bungee to eat your cable for control, the H5 headset with powerful high-res audio, and the pretty headset stand to tie everything together. Do you even game, bro? Become an Argent yourself. Check these out below. All right, so let's start off with a bit of a quick refresh about the RX 6600 XT. So it's the lowest price card in the current Radeon lineup, and it's really meant to target the 1080p gaming crowd above anything else. As for actual specs, what you get is a Navi 23 core with 2048 stream processors and a higher set of clocks than the 6700 XT. That's a hallmark of the Navi 23 core on both the desktop and laptop side, uh, and its focus is on efficiency and high frequencies. Now, what does get cut in a big way are two areas. The memory capacity goes to eight gigabytes, and the memory interface uh, gets knocked back to just 128 bit. Now remember, the RTX 3060 that this thing's supposed to compete against uses a 192 bit wide layout. Now, of course, AMD can also fall back to their Infinity Cache, but it's been cut down to just one third the size of the 6700 XTs. The smaller cache amount is probably one of the reasons why the board power is rated to just 160 watts. But let's talk about that price for a second, because I know it's gonna be a hotly debated topic, especially after the RX 6700 XT ended up hitting hundreds of dollars above AMD's suggested price. Um, even before scalpers got their hands on it, a lot of that was because prices spiraled out of control from you know, from everything from memory to PCBs to shipping. So that made it impossible to actually hit the $480 starting at price. Uh, but eventually AMD did step in and partially subsidize some cards right before launch so they could actually go for the marketed cost. What's gonna happen with the ARC 6600 XT is anyone's guess. But one thing's pretty obvious, guys. If for some damn miracle, if this thing hits $380, um, it's still $50 more expensive than the RTX 3060, and that's making a big statement. We also have to remember, AMD's setting this up to be the spiritual successor to the ARC's 5600 XT, and to a lesser extent, the 5700, but it's more expensive than both of those. I mean, the 5600 XT launched at just $280, while the 5700 came out for $350. So yeah, there is another hit against that $380 price. Another thing that really needs to be mentioned is what AMD is showing as their reference design versus the reality uh, for most people. I mean, look at this thing. It's so cute and perfect for small form factor systems. But most will end up looking like the XFX Merc 306 Black Edition card that I have here and will be using it for this review. And let me say this again. I hate seeing efficient GPUs like the 6600 XT packaged into such ridiculously huge cards. It's just so pointless. This one's two and a half slots high and it's almost 11 and a half inches long. It's actually one of the smaller ones if you can believe that. I've seen some of the cards pushing 12 inches in triple slots and they're a lot wider as well. Luckily, this one looks pretty good with an overall stealth design and it's fed by a single eight pin power connector. So compatibility with older systems shouldn't be an issue. Luckily, some companies like ASRock will be scratching that small form factor itch with cards like the Challenger ITX, 
hopefully they will be widely available at a fair price. Now, coming back to the XFX card, what do you get for all that size and cooling? Well, um, very little. There's a small increase to the game and boost clocks, and that's about it. Oh, and there is that nice little $40 increase in the prices that basically push this thing into the ARC 6700 XT territory. Now, I can rant about that all day, guys, but let's move on to what you actually came here for, and that's performance. Now, before getting into that, I do want to talk about power consumption, because if you look at AMD's numbers, Navi 23 is supposed to be ultra efficient, and that's exactly what it is. As a matter of fact, even though the XFX card is slightly overclocked, its peak power consumption actually came in under AMD's total board power spec. And on average, it consumed just 130 watts, which makes it perfect for more efficient small form factor systems, minus the XFX card's size, of course. Compared to the RTX 3060, well, it isn't even close at all. That thing sucks back more than 40 watts on average, and even stepping up to the 6700 XT will bring you into a whole different dimension when it comes to power needs. And with the XFX card sporting the massive cooler, the average temperature stays totally controlled at a maximum of 70 degrees, while the fans spun at super low speeds. Remember, this cooler is meant for a lot of higher end cards, so it doesn't have any trouble here. And that hotspot temperature is completely normal as well. That all leads to clock speeds running along at a pretty constant speed of just over 2.6 gigahertz. But it's also evident that as temperatures increase, you get a cutback of about 25 megahertz. So now on to gaming benchmarks, and let's get started by walking through 1080p. And the results are pretty straightforward, guys. The 6600 XT either ties or beats the RTX 3060, and in a lot of cases, acts like a bridge between the 3060 and slightly higher end cards like the 6700 XT and the 3060 Ti. But here's the other thing. At a technical price, and I repeat, a technical price of $380, and the version we have here with a minor overclock likely going for around the $425 mark, is the RX 6600 XT really worth the money for 1080p? In a normal market, I'd say its $50 premium is too much against the RTX 3060, but this isn't a normal market by any stretch of the imagination. So who knows where everything's gonna land? You'll also notice I've included the RX 5700 here as well, and there's a reason for that. From a pricing perspective, it actually started at $350. Let that sink in for a second. It was launched a little more than two years ago, but in a bunch of games, it still gives pretty comparable performance to this brand new $370 GPU. That right there is a perfect example of today's GPU market. If you have one, don't get rid of it for 1080p gaming, that's for sure. Moving on to Quad HD, and we have to remember, AMD said that this is a card that's laser focused on 1080p performance. And if you wanna run at high resolution, you'd be better off stepping up to the ARX 6700 XT, if you can find one, of course. Overall, it provides good frame rates with every game being playable. You can buy this thing and be confident 1440p gaming is possible. But there's something else going on here as well. With only a 128-bit bus, AMD is hoping their Infinity Cache makes up for that bandwidth efficiency versus the RTX 3060's 192-bit. But in some cases, it certainly isn't. And in the end, the gap between the two cards become virtually non-existent here. And that sort of points towards the 3060 being a bit more of a versatile card if you're buying for 1080p right now and want to potentially upgrade to a high resolution screen in the future. The RX 5700 pulls even closer too, and I'd say that's even more of an issue since it would stop AMD's previous customers from moving laterally towards a new card in the same price bracket, of course. There's pretty much no reason to ditch your 5700 series right now, but I guess the same thing could have been said about the RTX 2000 and RTX 3000 series. Now we're in the process of updating our library of ray trace games, but even these older titles, the 6600 XT tends to suffer against Nvidia's cards. But look, that's to be expected anyways. As more and more titles get the FSR treatment, this will hopefully improve, but until that point, I wouldn't recommend turning on ray tracing Plus, if you saw Dimitri's video from the other day, you'll see how pointless it is in most games right now. Or in the case of Fortnite, it's just simply broken in the epic setting. So I guess that wraps things up, and I'm gonna level with anyone watching this video. Even if graphics card prices were normal right now, I'm actually not a fan of AMD's offering with the RX 6600 XT. It's being launched six months after the RTX 3060, and for more money, it 
barely beats it in most situations. And they say that it's a day late and a dollar short. There is one shining light in this whole thing though. While the performance per dollar isn't great, the 6600 XT's performance per watt is incredible. And that's amazing news for upcoming cards from AMD. The only way out of this is to flood channels with cards near the $380 mark before the RTX 3060 can hit higher levels of availability. But will that happen? Well, it's really hard to know. But AMD needs to do better since their pricing policies are leaving cards on the shelves at retailers uh, that are actually selling NVIDIA cards for MSRP. In today's environment and given this demand, that's just a disaster. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the RX 6600 XT. Let us know what you guys think about it. Um, are you excited? Like, are you really excited about this graphics card? Chime in with your thoughts in the comments. I'm Ebro with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, don't forget to spend responsibly.